Uh, Graham West is my name, um, past Commodore Royal Yacht Club of Victoria from the years uh, 1970 to 1972. The club to me has been a very, very big part of my life. I uh, joined the club in 1962, which goes back quite a few years now, and I've seen a lot of changes. It is the oldest Royal Yacht Club in the Southern Hemisphere. The club was started as the Victoria Yacht Club in 1853 by a gentleman called Sir William Stall, and subsequently he organised a committee and they carried on as the Victoria Yacht Club with their premises in the city. The members in those days were well-heeled importing gentlemen with big boats. The club's members were men of gentry, if you like, and a little bit, um, my I use the term, up themselves as far as who could become a member and who couldn't. Even when I joined in 1962, ladies weren't really allowed in the yacht club then. I can remember my wife coming down and I said, you'll have to sit on the little veranda, doll, which didn't go down very well. The boat owners decided to organise their own racing, which they did in conjunction with some yachts that were organised down at Geelong at the uh, Geelong Yacht Club at that time. The name change for the Royal Yacht Club of Victoria came about in 1876 when the then Commodore wrote to the Queen and asked for royal sanction for the Royal Yacht Club of Victoria. This was granted and then the club went from the Victoria Yacht Club to the Royal Yacht Club of Victoria, and that was in 1876. The clubhouse was built in about 1935. Uh, unfortunately, uh, two weeks after I became Commodore in 1970, uh, it burnt down. And we were uh, a yacht club without a club. And I was a Commodore without a club. We used to have uh, social functions such as pantomimes and a lot of those things have disappeared just as uh, traditions within the club have disappeared. I mean if, if you sailed out of here at one time and didn't fly your club burgee uh, you were full, hauled up before the committee. Why aren't you flying your burgee? The other thing with organisations like this is the volunteer area. No club can survive unless you have volunteers. But if you haven't got volunteers to back up for the racing, such as we've had to do with the series we've run, there was the, flying, the World Flying 15 Championships we had here and then the Para Championships we had here, and we would have been looking at volunteers in the 50 to 60 range of people. So no volunteers. No active club. Our club has specialised in certain types of yachts. Um, one design we still have here, and it's the biggest fleet in the world actually, there's about 13 of them I think, is the uh, Yachting World Diamond, a Jack Holt design that was very popular going back a few years ago, um, but has gradually dwindled out when new boats have taken over. Um, but we have the biggest diamond fleet, I believe, in the world at 13. The other series we have is the S80s. We've got quite a lot of those and we've got a lot of bluebirds. The slow boat to China, we call them. Um, but they're a good fun boat. And it's good to see this type of class because it does keep the club and the members together. Port Phillip sailing is, is uh, different to Sydney Harbour. Uh, the guys who race on Sydney Harbour come down here and get a hell of a shock because when we get the bad conditions here, the short, steep seas, which they're not used to, it really knocks them around. And that's the thing, you've got to, if you buy a new boat for Port Phillip, you've got to make sure it just doesn't fit in between the seas, it fits, overlaps the seas. Otherwise they stop, they won't go. So there is a definite understanding of, of what type of boat you, you sail here. When you buy your, your first yacht, it's the greatest time ever and the next time it's a great time is when you flog it. 
when you sell it. <laughs> then you can start all over again. The biggest experience I had was uh, delivering a yacht called Helsel 2, uh, which people would know, from Darwin to Cape Town uh, with David Leroy. Um, that was an experience and a half across that Indian Ocean. Um, we we uh, really got hit by a, a, a biggest storm I have ever seen or been involved. We had 70 knots at one stage with mountainous seas. The gorilla pit in this yacht decided to disintegrate and we thought we were going to lose the boat at that stage. However, we didn't. We got through and we got into Durban and got the damage fixed. Um, so that was really the thrilling experience I've had as far as sailing. And well, it wasn't thrilling at the time. It was terrifying at the time. I think that yacht clubs are a special type of person. Members uh, are people who stick together and really help each other. Um, they all enjoy the, the one sport, uh, which is yachting, and it's an exciting sport. People we had here that a lot of the members wouldn't even know about, a fellow called Sir Alec Rose, the lone yachty. There is a, a painting of it in the clubhouse. He circumnavigated the world and he called into Melbourne. And I picked up his boat at the heads, brought it down Port Phillip Bay and brought it into the marina, or the new marina at the time. It was amazing because we had, I think the estimate at the time was 15 to 20,000 people on the jetties to welcome this man. Lively Lady was built in India in 1949 and she is being um, refitted again and could be doing the trip again. So she might be circumnavigating the world uh, for the third time. <laughs>